All right, welcome back to Sidious Mag Live. It is day two of the World Athletics Championships. I'm Chris Chavez. This is Kyle Merber, John Anderson over here, my co-host for the day. And we're joined right away with a very special guest. We're going to get right into it because <laughs> the, over the next couple of days, we're just going to be stacking guests on this show. And so to start things off, we've got the USATF president, the former Tracktown USA president, one of the key people instrumental in bringing these world championships here to Eugene, Oregon. Uh, what other titles am I missing? How well, UVA. UVA, director of cross country and, and <laughs> track and field. Uh, Vin Lanana. Vin, thank you so much for taking the time to sit down with us. And so now that you have seen kind of the two days worth of uh, the atmosphere here, how, how do you feel? Oh, it's fabulous. It's um the crowd is crazy. The noise is astounding. Uh, the athletes are performing. What, what more could you ask? Yeah. So, kind of, do you, for a lot of our viewers who might be younger and kind of going back, to, can we get a little bit of a history lesson to kind of get us to start on Long get, Island? Yeah. <laughs> how we got to this point? All right. We don't, <laughs> how long is this show? <laughs> well, a history of how these World Championships came to be uh, and and landing here. Well, I think it all came down to when I first arrived in uh, Eugene in 2005, we talked about bringing the Olympic trials here and trying to get in the back into the meat hosting business. And I remember having a conversation with uh, with Phil Knight that they, when I came here, I did the um, I did the press conference, They carted me up to um, to Portland. I sat down with Phil and he said, OK, first hundred days. And I said, well, I think we should get the Olympic trials. And he said, what are you doing here? Go. <laughs> and that was it. And we started, and that's how we, that was what's, what started this whole thing. I don't think everyone realizes how special that was. You know, I think for the younger generation who's very used to having meets now in Eugene, the oral history of getting that there, like that's, I mean, before my time, I remember 2012 and the trials being, but 2008, you know, I was only in high school. I didn't realize that was a huge deal at the time to bring it to Eugene, right? Yeah. You know, I had been here. Um, eight, and I think 1984, I was at Dartmouth. And I got here and I had one guy, and I go into Hayward Field, and it's packed. And uh, everybody's kind of squashed in the east. And I was on the uh, east side. And um, guy came on the loudspeaker and he said, can everybody just kind of scrunch in a little bit because there are a thousand people want to get in here because it was Cruz. Uh, Joaquin Cruz was running the 1500. He already won mm -hmm. the 15, he was running the eight. And I thought, Am I on Mars or what? <laughs> and uh, I always had that vision. And then I went at Stanford and came here with our uh, our track team. And I remember spending so much time telling them how great it is here. And then I got here and it was kind of quiet. And uh, uh, Oregon didn't have a whole bunch of distance runners. And at Stanford, we had lots of distance runners. And uh, the guys just sucked it in because uh, we had a great day and the crowd was going crazy. and. Uh, that's what I remember about it. So we get the trials, but when's the genesis? When's the first seed that's, you know what? We could really host the ultimate of ultimate track meets. Like when did that, when did, did you wake up in a cold sweat in the middle of the night? Or, you know, <laughs> like when did that, that seed finally go, okay, this um, is the thing. That was this morning. <laughs> <laughs> no. You had black hair like a there couple days go. ago. That's yeah. exactly right. Um, I think what happened, well, it was this. We were, we hosted the trials. In 2008, we got the trials. We hosted it, and um, we immediately went forward and hosted the World Junior Championship in 2014. And uh, it was great. It was a grand success. Place was crowded. It was exciting. The international flavor. They stayed in the dorms. It was really 17 buses coming from Portland. It was spectacular. And thing finishes, and I once again sitting down with uh, Mr. Knight. Uh, people don't realize just how influential he is. For our sport everybody knows he's the sports icon but for track and i said um what do you think i said what do you think of this thing he says he said yeah what's next <laughs> so i said well we're going to host the world indoor championships tough boss in 16. <laughs> <laughs> and he's oh he's not even my boss either right, right. uh and he's I, he said the world i said the world championship he said yeah i said and so i start telling him all the reasons why <laughs> Eugene can't do it. I said, look, it's too small. It's this. They've only had, they, they have in Paris and Rome. He said, I know where they have it. I said, uh, so I start giving him a list of things. And he says, well, with that crummy attitude, of course we're not going to get them. And um, that's kind of where it, where it went. So how do you have to convince yourself that, all right, Eugene can do this? Well, 
I think part of it is when you have a conversation with somebody that is this icon, uh, it doesn't have to have much convincing because he sees around corners better mm -hmm. than anybody. He's, he's something special. What was the motivation to do that? Because, you know, you come in, you're the coach of Oregon. You don't necessarily have to take on that role as well <laughs> to be, you know, the one out there promoting and bringing the sport at the highest level to this small city, but you decide to. Well, when I think when Eugene is healthy and Hayward Field is packed, our sport has a chance. And without that, I'm not sure we do. And uh, the reason that the U of O coaches wants to bring the – world championships and Olympic trials and all that. We wanted to send the message that Oregon was back in business. Mm -hmm. um, you don't have to scrunch people into the stands now because <laughs> I look <laughs> at this place. So it has been really kind of uh, funny to be on the international broadcast crew with some of these people, and they're going on and goes, it's like this stadium was built exclusively for track and field. Everything's <laughs> where it should be. I'm like, well, of course you dopes. <laughs> you know, and I shouldn't say that Rob Walker's a wonderful guy, but I'm like, no, <laughs> listen, right, it's not a soccer field. And it's not a football field. It is not that we have like, no, that's really why it's here. That's why it seems like it's so perfect for track is because they built it for track. Uh, but when you look at that thing, and you just think, okay, and the first time you saw it and they're packing people in, uh, how, do you, how do you marry up historic Hayward Field with what is kind of futuristic Hayward Field? It's pretty simple. It's the people. It's the people. It's the community. It's people who embrace the sport. People who love the sport. If there's any place in the United States that deserved the right to host the first world championship in our country, mm -hmm. it's Eugene Oregon. It's a, and it's a phenomenal place. Absolutely. Right? Like you look at that, and you, know, you and I talked about when you gently dismantled the old <laughs> building um, <laughs> with bulldozers and wreckers and everything, but it was gently dismantled. Uh, but, but to see it go up and see that whole thing, it, it really, it's a remarkable structure. And I love sometimes people are like, well, I don't know if it's the most functional. I'm like, yeah, you're right, because we're building track stadiums all the time. <laughs> yeah. So let's complain about this one. Uh, but when you, when you see that thing, just uh, is there a sense of pride? There is a... I'm overwhelmed that that actually is there. It looks like that. You know, what, I see a great track stadium. What do you see when you look at it? Well, when I, it, it actually, um, when I arrived here last year, I hadn't seen it finished until I got here for the NCAAs in uh, 21. And purposely, I didn't go into the stadium. I went by it a few times, but I didn't go in. So I didn't go in until the Wednesday of the uh, first day of the meet. And they had called me from uh, U of O and said, hey, we want to show you around the facility. And I went in and I actually got the tour, coincidentally, <laughs> with, with Knight. And uh, there were a bunch of people in there. And uh, we were looking around. I was standing up in the tower and looking over at it. Look at the stands and all that. How could you not be overwhelmed by it? And I was. I was completely overwhelmed. How do you feel about your caricature when you walk in uh, on the field? Like, you got one of all the old coaches, right? The, uh, old being former coaches. That <laughs> Careful, John. Former, yeah. former coaches. Uh, you like yours? Yeah. You know, I have a sure, it, it looks like a, it, looks, <laughs> it looks like a carnival kind of thing. You know, the guy sketched it for whatever it is, you know, $20, and they do that in your kids. But it's unique, right? You're all in there, and you're like, wow, there's... Well, first off, everybody's named Bill, and then we could... You know, they're all named Bill until you come along. Well, Basically. yeah, Martin. Yeah. yeah Martin before But that. mostly it's just Bill. Yeah. Guy's <laughs> named Bill with the coach here. Well, that was the first thing. They told me I had to change my name to Bill. <laughs> yeah. But I, I, thought, I, I thought my yeah. my mom would be upset. Right. I had the same thing happen. I applied for a job once. I'm going to di digress. And there was a great linebacker for the Packers named John Anderson, and he worked <laughs> in Milwaukee. So when I, uh, the news director said, we, might, we, we think we'd like to bring you in would you consider changing your name? <laughs> and I said, uh, sure, how about Bart Starr? And I, I never heard from the guy again. Like, he apparently did not think I was funny in the least, and there were no Packer jokes, and that's why I'm sitting here with you right now instead of <laughs> covering the Brewers. <laughs> so you talk about the health of Eugene, and let's say the next eight days, or if we're including this evening, which is probably going to be one of the most exciting evenings that we'll have on the schedule, let's say it all goes amazing and we walk away saying, Eugene is bumping and, like, track is good in the U.S., What's next? Like, is there another destination? Like, do we need an East Coast Hayward Field? Is that is is it in Charlottesville? Where is it, and how do we do it from here? <laughs> I don't know about Charlottesville, <laughs> but I will tell you this: I'm not sure that the physical manifestation is really the most important thing. It's the spirit. It's like the stuff that you guys are doing. You know, when you guys are appealing to the youth, I mean, the question really becomes: What do the kids want to see? What do they relate to? What are they excited about? 
this is going to be, no one ever questioned whether we would have the greatest world championships ever. You have the greatest athletes on the planet. You have the greatest fans and your greatest facility. So when we walk out of here on July 25th, the question is exactly that. So what are we doing with it? Because if we haven't made the names of the, in particular, the United States athletes, household names, then we've, we've wasted a whole bunch of time. We've got a great national stadium. We had a great world championships and we've got the NCAAs and everything else here. But what do we do July 25th? So um, I have a lot of my own ideas. You can't reveal do. them yet? <laughs> oh, no, I'm happy to reveal them. Um, I think what we need to do is we need to think differently about our sport. We have to broadcast it differently. We have to be in a position where we get the kids really at the center of it. Like, if you were in the stadium when they did the opening ceremony mm -hmm. and they had the 192 kids out there, that's it. Now we need, uh, we need millions of kids to mm -hmm. be participating and embracing the sport. So that's, and everything we can do to do that, that's what we need to do. I feel like we have those kids. Right, participation in track hasn't at the high school level hasn't dropped a ton. Um, I mean, I shouldn't say that. If you went by percentage wise, it has in that there just aren't as many kids as there used to be. Right, take away the baby boomers and so just the actual <laughs> population growth in the way it is. There are fewer high school kids now than there were twenty and thirty years ago. But it still is engaged and it is still uh, it, people participate a lot, uh, mostly in the same numbers as they did if you went just percentage wise. Uh, it's the how do how do we hang them on how do we keep them on and we made i made the suggestion the other day how somewhere we lose it because everybody remembers who the fastest kid in their neighborhood was right and like mm -hmm. it meant something okay so here we are in hayward field fastest neighborhood in the world right now like if you <laughs> went here you're like you're the fastest kid in the neighborhood um it's it's just how do i how do i hang on to that how do i stop from being run over by 12 months of the nfl you know who purposely knows what they're doing right let's wait the draft is too close now we're we've got to move the draft because we don't have anything in April and everything in May, you know, and all these other things do it 24, or excuse me, 12 months a year. How do we, how do we do that? How do I keep myself on the radar so that I can fight with these behemoths? Is that the challenge that there's so many moving parts in the sport? You know, so many different organizations and countries and meets and, and sponsors. Yeah. Athletes, number of athletes, yeah. Well, I, I, here's how I look. Everybody keeps talking about growing the sport. I don't even know what that means. I'm so sick of hearing it. Mm -hmm. We're gonna grow the sport. I mean, our sport is grown. And we do have all these kids at the youth level. Look at the JOs, 8,000 mm -hmm. kids at the JOs. Look at the high school performances. What we're trying to do is start meets in places and think the crowd is suddenly going to come to the middle of New York City. That's nonsense. We have to take the sport and bring it to the people. Let's find these places. Let's get, let's get our household names at every high school state meet. Let's run an event at every high school state meet. That's 50 states. A great idea. I actually uh, like that. At least, you know, some of the, the state meets that have thousands of parents and fans, it's like, do an exhibition event. Why not, you know, after the high school I mean, we mile, sit, yeah, the throw photos the of the Wisconsin high school meet when Roisin Willis, I think, just ran like two flat. Mm -hmm. It was whoa, a couple th thousands of people there. And it's like, if you throw a couple pros in there and they run something, even it doesn't even have to be their best. Like that blows away that young high school population. And so I think bringing the pros closer, it is, I mean, that's, it's a great step. Also, if you watch the high school uh, state meet in Wisconsin, a lot of times Kenny Harrison's there giving away medals. Like he's a guy who's a presenter, right? We, we're, 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 we're an undervalued state. We have a lot of great. We, we really <laughs> Every do. day we're going to be talking about we Wisconsin. Really do. We have a lot of, lot of some great traditional, great traditional programs. The Division two and Division three programs were great. Right, you get uh, lacrosse and uh, UW lacrosse was fantastic. <laughs> there under Gary Wilson. Gary Wilson. We're, we're getting off subject. But you went to but you went to Missouri. <laughs> it's because the guy in Wisconsin wouldn't let me run. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> he I said, "Sorry, it. we got a guy that's really good. We don't it. we don't need you." So oh, by the way, he was right. How come you know a lot of people have ideas? I have a ton of ideas, and nothing's really coming to fruition yet. <laughs> but you've been able to have ideas that then do go on to become reality. So, what is that process like? How come? you've been able to do that as a head coach. Obviously now at USATF, you're in a, a greater position to be able to do those sort of things, but is it just communication or people don't see through? Is it money? Like, how do I, I want my ideas to come true. <laughs> well, I think that what it comes down to is have a good idea 
and then you just can't. That's the problem. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, I can't that's help a that. nice way of saying it. Yeah, that's the problem. It's all uh, bad ideas. <laughs> but I think you have to. I mean, the truth of the matter is you need resources to get these things done. You could, Everybody has plenty of ideas. Uh, the key is to have the resources, the determination, the team. Like, I'm really excited about this journey to gold that USA Track and Field is putting together. I think that has a good chance. And I think... You know, I think we go back a bunch of years when the U.S. championship would finish, the NCAA would be completed, and we cart the whole show over to Europe. Mm -hmm. So if you are out of sight, out of mind for uh, mm -hmm. July, August, and September and through the football season, then you drop in and start the Penn Relays and the Drake Relays, everybody's like, ah, oh, who's that that ran? I think the what we have to do is we have to clean the United States. Domestic opportunities is the piece that, you, that we have to do, and we have to pay attention to all the events, not just the mile. Mm -hmm. And what? We, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, God. Back, this was a, thanks for coming, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> so I think, and no, no, you know, of course, Mac Fleet. I gotta yeah. give him a shout out. But I He's think, better at the 15. There you go, all right. Um, I think that we missed the boat on the shuffle, the high jump, the long jump, the triple jump. Um, you know, things that go far. I think people, the, the worst, <laughs> the most disappointing answer I receive when I talk to anyone that is doing a broadcast, for instance, is they say, oh, it's too hard to understand. What could be so hard about if somebody jumps here and someone jumps there? <laughs> right. It should it's be the school easy. system, you know. It's right. just like we, we got to simplify things. Right. right. It's like, and always like they got a guy with a red flag and a white flag at the high jump. Like there's nothing that has more immediate feedback than the high jump. Like really? I, thanks. Which I one needed, was which? I needed the red flag on top of the fact that I just hurt my back, you know, landing on top of the bar when it goes through. But that. When you talk about broadcasting it, like that's the hardest part of the broadcast is to bring the drama, the field events that's actually there. And this is from this morning doing the hammer where literally the men's hammer, there was about six throws in a row where the guys just went boom, 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 boom and topped each other. And unless you get those, if it's just like, here's the hundred after the hundred, let's go back for another and we see one throw. And then, you, you know, you see the next half of the hundred and now you see one throw. And so at some point, right, it takes a cumulative things to sit there and watch that and draw that line about here they are and these guys are getting better and this, and and, and that's hard to do with the field event because so often the field event is here show the th here throw the three jumps that you know here's third second mm -hmm. and first, and there's a lot that can get to that. Um, I, I, goes into I, that. I hope it's not a sore subject, but I want to. They bring up like the track town summer series from a couple of years ago because I was particularly that was great. Ex excited was about super it. fun. Like I was a couple of years into being you know getting into really becoming a track fan and the fact that all of a sudden I I felt like New York had a team for a little bit uh, it was it was cool and and so what lessons did you kind of take away from the one year of doing that because I was kind two of years. on pins and two years okay, then. Pin, I was on pins was, and needles. Only, so, he, was, yeah. he only became a track fan <laughs> during the second year. <laughs> I, I was on pins and needles, waiting for it to kind of come back. And so, like, what what were some of the obstacles there? Because you know, a lot of people do talk about. It. It's like, yeah, if, if I had a team, you know, I'd, I'd root for them. Yeah, well, I think it's you know back to resources. Yeah, I mean, it comes down to that was expensive, and I think the deal was that we really were, uh, you know, really optimistic and we were idealistic, and uh, you know, you looked at it and. It's actually, we're very fortunate. We partnered up with uh, ESPN. You know that, you know, the company. John, you know <laughs> yep. Uh, yeah, I still, and, uh, <laughs> still got a key card that gets me in. <laughs> <laughs> and what we did was we created um, this two-hour show, and we really worked hard on doing it. But the issue it came down to, when you're trying to get partners, you get people to stay in it for a long enough time, it has to be successful. The team concept... I think it's a good concept. I, I look here at, and at the World Championships and the people, I don't think there's that many more people who understand what uh, 224 is in the uh, high jump. Mm -hmm. Do you know? Mm -hmm. 224 is seven, five and a half. <laughs> seven, five and a quarter. So. Good job. Did you just crunch those numbers? No. <laughs> I'm trying to think, because 228 got through yesterday and that was seven, six and a half. <laughs> 233 is 7.7.5. Seven and and Mac, check that, Mac. 236 <laughs> seven, something like that. Mac went to work. All I know is 245 is eight, 8 feet and a quarter. Well, I think the thing that was really good about the Trackdown Summer Series was 
you know, obviously keeping everyone domestic. And I, I, I do like going to Europe as an athlete. I thought that's a fantastic experience. It's a lot of fun. But uh, something that was great was that for those few weeks, we knew where all of the top domestic athletes in the world were going to be competing. And one of my points that I always harp on is that there's just too many meets. Like, there's too many options of places you can go. And we talk about, like, the difficulty of following the sport. And the thing that was nice about Tracktown was it was like, all right, everyone's going to be there. Then everyone's going to be there. And everyone's going to be there. But it's really hard in, I guess, the way things are set up today. It's like, oh, uh, there's a race in California. There's a race in New York. There's a race in Ireland. There's a race in Belgium. And you never know where anyone's going to be. And so having that predictability seems like it would only be possible if we had fewer meets. Well, I think... I think to Chris's question, I mean, the deal was that we may have been too many people. We had 144 athletes, and it was a lot of people to move around, to house, etc. But I will say that the athletes were fabulous because in the end of the day, they knew that the success was, uh, was dependent upon their ability to be personalities. And it was all driven to making the U.S. athletes uh, really popular because that's what's going to do it. Think of your own experiences uh, competing as a kid. The ones that you liked, well, maybe that maybe it was somebody who performed at a high level, but most of you liked the person who's a who's got a cool uh, personality and who's going to uh, who is going who's who's whatever they're talking about is going to resonate with kids. Mm -hmm. That's what we have to do. So the lessons learned, finances, the numbers. And I think it all in the end really revolved around. Uh, the viability of it financially. I remember Colby, after he won the 1500 on the microphone, <laughs> repping his uh, team, he, he yelled into the mic, like, San Francisco! <laughs> and like the crowd went wild because it was the enthusiasm. <laughs> and like, you know, I don't know if anyone from San Francisco was in the crowd really, you know, vibing for that team, but <laughs> definitely won some fans over. So uh, after this week, I mean, what, 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 are you, what are you excited about most in the sport? <laughs> after this week? Yeah. Um, you know, in the end, and when it's all over, and it's all said and done, come 25th of July, the question becomes, can we create a roadmap that gets us to 28? Mm -hmm. Because these same, those kids that you guys are motivating are going to be the ones that have the shot of competing in 28, or at least being, whether mm -hmm. they, they're going to try to compete in 28. And I think for us, that's really what we have to do. We have to start that process now. I was at a I was at a uh, function a couple of days ago, and uh, you, know, you talk about the world championship. It was really great that when something is successful, how many people help to get it started. And I was thinking, <laughs> okay. uh, and it was a lot of wees out there. And I was thinking, it, was a, it must be a back. <laughs> but I, I think here. Everybody's got your back. Nobody's at your shoulder. That's exactly. the thing, right? Yeah, well, I was behind you all the way. How about this? I'm doing like this, so I know you're there. They were just way back. Yeah. But I. But I think that now, I, I, I hope that what this has demonstrated, Chris, your point is that um, I hope people see the importance of having the world's best, best athletes in the United States and then having people motivated to go on to 28. These same people and the fans and the young kids. I was watching some of the, looked at some of the statistics of first time world championship uh, competitors here. So now we have a chance uh, next year in Budapest, this journey to gold that USA Track and Field is doing. Mm -hmm. We have, I believe, that this provides us with the best chance. And I think it comes down to, just like any crisis, you look at it and say, okay, we have to roll up our sleeves and get this done, or else we're gonna have a real, real issue. So I don't, I don't think it's a, it's a luxury mm -hmm. to say, oh, let's hope we can build this into 2028. This is a have to do. Yeah. And that's really what, what is most important about this world. We're in a spot where, at least in the, the kind of the raw material that you need, which is great athletes, are in a spot where, like, a thing Mo could be around in 28. Mm -hmm. You know, um, Holloway, close, but Sid could be. And, like, those people are here now, which is crucial to get them out there. Like, everybody knows Allison, and it's wonderful, and her career is fantastic. But we're done milking her. Right. And she can go on and, and, and be an ambassador, like she says, and wants to do all that. But in terms of seeing her all the time, the most easily probably the most identifiable U.S. track and field athlete, you know, she, she's done. So we're fortunate and we need to push those people. But 
you know, when you take Mo, you take some, like we have Javon Harrison. There are people that can show up in LA that can carry this if we just, and for most of them, they seem like they'd be all right. To, uh, they'd be willing to have the wagon attached to them. Mm -hmm. um, it's just how do we best make sure we keep pushing them out in front so that people keep seeing them competing. Exactly. It's, 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 it's the broadcast. I mean, there were a lot, there was a lot of discussion. I remember hearing about the size of the stadium. What is the difference if there's 18,000, 19,000, 20,000, 30,000, 50,000? It's how many people are actually uh, uh, are really watching it. And mm -hmm. we need millions and millions of people. And we need the names to, to do this in the U.S. And we are the, we have to crack that market because that's what's going to change it. We have to do it because we have the best athletes in the world. And we have to be able to create those to be household names. And that's what does it. Do you ever have conversations with people outside of the sport of track and field about this sort of thing? Because I feel like, you know, we're very insular in many ways. And like we have our ideas and we kind of bounce it around. But are there any other sports that you ever look to and think like, you know, they are doing something that maybe we can bring back to us? Well, of course. Uh, I, I, you know, what I, what I think, if, if, if people really have ideas, right? I, I have, have some ideas. ideas. They're bad ideas, apparently. <laughs> uh, on, uh, you know, we're going to, what I tried to do is this Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, we're having listening tours on Prefontaine trails what time at 6 45 in the morning okay they can be back by the Sidious mag group run yeah, by yeah. Yeah. yeah depends how fast you walk and then what we'll do is bring your ideas i hopefully seb is going to come on uh on one of those you know max siegel will be on all three of them and uh people have ideas let's bring them forward we maybe we'll get one or two you say, I have lots of ideas, and maybe once in a while they're pretty good. I'm going to show up in a wig. <laughs> <laughs> I got some ideas. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I get it. Listen, he, he's in a unique situation because there are a ton of them, but like, like Devin Allen's in a really unique spot, mm -hmm. right, that he could do some unbelievable things. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not saying I'm picking favorites, but if he were going to win and then go play for the Eagles, it, it would be astonishing, the eyeballs. Mm -hmm. You know, and there's people that are right now the world's greatest group are trying to do a documentary on and they're working on it, they're trying to sell it to ESPN and they're talking to me, I said, well, listen, the first thing you have to do is not say, hey, I've got this great track guy who's going to go play in the NFL. You've got to go, look, I have this NFL wide receiver. And, oh, by the way, he's the world champ or whatever. Well, you've got to sell it backwards because it's harder to do it that way. But he's in a really unique position that he mm -hmm. could really uh, uh, carry the banner in the sport just from playing on Sunday afternoons. And I think, I, it, well, what has happened, I think one of the things that, uh, John, I think what we've learned from at least through the years I've been involved in the sport, when we hang our hat on one, two, or three athletes, that's what that's where we get into trouble. And I think sure. when I, I was talking about the world championships, what are people most excited about? I think when you look at the people in the stands, here in Eugene, Oregon, they understand what a good high jump is or a good hammer throw or you know, everybody knows 1,500, et cetera. But at the end of the day, if we could, I think the people out there are actually paying attention, United States, uh, mm -hmm. Ukraine, uh, Kenya. And I, that's what, you know, when you talk about this, the summer series, mm -hmm. that was the thing that got people excited. And it wasn't dependent upon one, two, or three athletes. So I think we have to do them both. We can, mm -hmm. do, um, uh, we can do some of these great athletes uh, and Sid McLaughlin, we have a lot of good things we right. can do. But in the end of the day, I think we have to create some kind of identity as a team. And not. And I, I'm not sure that just tying it to football. No, I just say I'm just saying he's in a unique spot yeah. where he could he mm -hmm. could shine a light that other Those people can in the way yeah. he does yeah. that. The other thing is we get so subject on domestic. And, and yes, you have to grow it there. But like the international athlete can help on this, right? Mm -hmm. Like people like to watch Rory McIlroy play in the PGA Tour, and they go, oh, that's right, he's Irish. Mm -hmm. No one is ever that I have ever seen worries about watching Roger Federer that he's Swiss and not American, or that Rafa Nadal is Spanish and not American. Like, that's a great, compelling athlete that he's on my television. I'll sit and watch for a minute. Mm -hmm. So it would be okay, you know, like if we've got some other people, like I'll watch Carson Barholm. And if we can even, we, we need to, I think it wouldn't hurt to introduce those people too and very much have them... It's okay. Yeah. We don't have to be so jingoistic, like, oh, my God, I got lost. Like, that's okay. Like, to have him out there and go, listen, dude just broke 46. Like, that's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. um, but sometimes I do think we we get so focused domestically that there is there is a spot 
for the great international athlete as well to help the, sell in, the sport here in the U.S. In the U.S., yes. exactly. Mm -hmm. So I think bringing the international totally. athletes here, okay. and I yeah. think is, is that, that's absolutely great. I mean, you bring uh, you know, a sub-46 second 400-meter runner. I don't mm -hmm. care where you are. <laughs> yeah. Sub-46 seconds, 400 right. Or bring Mondo back here and whatever he is, <laughs> Baton Rouge, Sweden, or wherever he's from. <laughs> you know, and he's well, so, By the way, do you, what do you think about the 25th? You realize, like, work, 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 and this thing's going to be gone like that. And all of a sudden, 25, and you're just, you're just you're going to a hotel room and cry. But I mean, it's like, <laughs> right? Like, it's just going to be abrupt. You're going to have years and years and years of this. Have you thought about that yet, or are we trying to put that off? Yeah, cross country again? coming up. Well, <laughs> exactly, there is that. Yeah. And by the way, the NCAA's are in uh, in uh, in Charlottesville in two years. In twenty three, yeah. Yeah. So that's going to be the next thing I work. You know, on. you're you're taking our our man Gary Martin. Yeah, I was we're, actually going to bring him up <laughs> because in, in a way, like when you were discussing about like the importance of storytelling around the athletes like and i don't want to pat ourselves like on the back a little bit too much but there's been like all these <laughs> you've never been kids. shy about that before yeah. chris <laughs> there's, there's been all these high school kids like over the years who've broken four minutes for the mile but i it really didn't take too much for us to sit down with him at new balance internationals and pair him with like trayvon Burmel, and then they just had a really cool conversation and then from there people got the chance to see like oh that gary martin kid is pretty funny i like his energy they start to follow along there's that little bit of name recognition you know that now okay What's he gonna do during the outdoor season? And then he finally breaks four and becomes this, you know, this selfless. You know, uh, he wrote a whole thing about like why Gary was so relatable. He's just like us. And, you know, to the track and field population, Gary's stardom has kind of exploded to this point. I think not not to this, you know, Olympic level, but within the track and field fans, like Gary's got a pretty solid fan base. And so, you know, how can we do that for? You know, there's Cade Flat, the same exact example where there's these, you know, the, the track community can rally around a really cool personality. And now we're handing over Gary Martin over to you. So, like, how, it's care no him. pressure, Vin, <laughs> on taking good care of Gary. Well, I think the first thing is you need him to run fast. <laughs> Are you allowed to talk a lot of about points. him yet, by the way? <laughs> yeah, you can. Signed okay. with All right, good. I just, yeah. Yeah, listen, yeah. Signed rule, delivered. rules are screwy because you can pay him now, but I just don't know if you can still talk about him. We don't pay him. <laughs> We're going to pay him. <laughs> We're going to pay him. <laughs> We're going to pay him. deal with us. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> he's just got, yeah they're just throwing money at him. I think personality is key. I mean, if, if there's one thing to run fast, but if you hide and you don't, you know, you, I, I watch a lot of our athletes through the years that have performed these great have really done uh, mm -hmm. great things, and then you stick a microphone, mm -hmm. and it's it's not that good. Now, Kyle, you've never had that problem before. Hey, you know, I, I've been trained. <laughs> you did a good yeah. job. You remember? Hey, yo, oh yeah. <laughs> remember when you anchored the distance medley? I did lead it off, but uh, oh, I did. I, I want to thank you for uh, calling me and letting me be on that team. <laughs> I <laughs> really appreciate the, that. That's yeah. right. We won the world championship. <laughs> yeah, championship but no, I, you know, I th I think that's the point. Like some. People really like the microphone in front of them. The fact that I'm here still, like I was an athlete that liked that. And some athletes don't like it. And it's like, how do you get the athletes to see the long-term value mm -hmm. and the promotion of the sport helping everyone? Maybe it won't just be for them. Maybe it'll be for you know the athlete a decade later that now has more fans cheering for them because of what the people before them were able to do and build that fan base. But uh, you definitely have to have a long-term vision. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I will, if you maybe you don't want to pat yourselves on the back, but I pat you on the back for what the work you guys have done in appealing to the younger uh, generation. I think it's really, it's, it's really impactful. And I think you guys need to really dig in deep after July 25th. Yeah. Look into and, the camera uh, and say yeah. that again. <laughs> Investors, <laughs> possibly <laughs> you. That's why I'm here, because they thought we should connect with the younger generation. Let's get a 57 year old dude yeah. who doesn't have a Twitter account on it. That'll be perfect for that. Um, but it's nice to have people in that are loquacious and want to talk, but there's also something about somebody like Barry Sanders didn't want to ever see a microphone, and yet he was compelling enough. If you're good enough, that you'd watch yeah. him, right? Like, <laughs> like Fred, Fred Curley. Yeah. I, Fred Curley's not going to say eight words by the end of this thing, but people are not going to be able to take your eyes off. Right? Pretty good, but, yeah. right? So you, there are certain instances where you're like, "That's okay. You don't have to say anything. I'm just going to sit and watch, and and be amazed by." Uh, by what you what, what you pull off. Well, speaking of being loquacious, Vin, we could sit here and we'd probably talk to you all day, but we know that you're a busy man, and we told you that it would only be 30 minutes, and I think we've now hit the limit. I got the signal. Uh, Chris, any departing words for... No, I was going to ask Vin if he's got any any final thoughts you kind of want to share with, with our audience, especially tapping into you know that next younger generation of, of track fans out there, and possibly new fans, too. Well, I think really what it comes down to is 
taking in this moment. I, I really don't want to go so far ahead and talk about July 25th for the next uh, next number of days here, the next eight days. We've got to enjoy this and appreciate it. And in the end, yes, come July 25th, we got a springboard. But for the next eight days, just suck it all in. And let's get let's really do a great job at enjoying what we're doing. Mm -hmm. Celebrate it. Just let exactly. it wash over you. There we go. Dan, we appreciate you Thanks taking so the time to sit down with us. Great great to be here. Thanks. Wahoo awesome. wah. Wahoo wah. You're like literally a who's who now. When you think oh. about that, right? Like you're a who's oh, John, who I think people. we should. I think. <laughs> John, maybe you go with me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just telling you. I don't know. Just, I'm just saying. We, we got a little live audience here. Like, clap it up for, yeah, for yeah. Vin Lynette. Yeah. Sometimes, yeah. listen. Sometimes the joke is too good, and it can't always be appreciated by the audience. You know who's who. So, All right. uh, where are you watching from? You got a good seat, by the way. I do have a good seat. Good. Excellent. I see you walk in the stadium today, just like by yourself. No one knew who you were, and you're just walking by fans. In my mind, I'm like, do these people realize that they are here because of you? And I don't think they did, but well, thanks. Yeah, thanks. appreciate. It. I think we've got our next guest, Vin. So we'll have you swap out seats sure. here. Yeah, but right, thank thanks, you, guys. Thanks so thank much you for so doing much, this. Man. Thank you as always. Thanks, guys. That was awesome. Yeah. By the way, I signed through 23 so I can come to Charlottesville now. <laughs> I'm in. I'm ready to go. All so, right. Coming up next. What's next? Isn't next just right now? There's no commercial well, break. All right. So the, let me. I, I want to give a little introduction for our next guest and kind of the origin. All right. Kate, you can come on. <laughs> come on. I'll introduce you while you're sitting. Okay. Um, but we, Chris and I, we were having a conversation a little while ago, and we were just having like, who in the next generation – of current runners do we think could be broadcasters or who would be mm -hmm. really good TV personalities? And we both agreed that Kate Grace, 2016 Olympian, um, would probably be one of the people that I think – you've always had unbelievable insight into the sport. I think you have the mind – for whether that's coaching or TV broadcast or whatever it is, to maybe want to do it one day, hopefully a few years from now. But so that was the the reason why we first reached out to Kate Grace to sit down and join us because we wanted to we wanted to pick your brain a little bit. So thank you for being here. Well, thank you for that. Do, yeah. do you want a job with low pay and un <laughs> terrible hours? I mean, who wouldn't aspire to that? You come to City <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it looks like a blast. <laughs> if you want uh, a little bit better, you go to ESPN. <laughs> yeah. I've heard there's two bathrooms with 10 of you, so that's, maybe that's the only yeah. thing. Yeah. <laughs> that's exactly that. So, uh, Kate, uh, what's it been like, I guess, being here and, and taking in the World Championships? Well, I got in at 1.30 a.m. yesterday, okay. so it's been short, and then I slept in and ran to the track today to catch the start of it <laughs> so what's it's been it's been great for the first for the last however many hours um no i mean i i think all of us especially at the trials um or, or i was here for usa's as well we're just like looking forward to kind of just what the atmosphere would be like here and already i don't know noticing other fans from other countries being in the stadium like that's pretty unique in a like in an American track meet, right? Um, it just brings a different level of expertise. Uh, I don't know. I'm excited for more. So, uh, just getting back one sec, do you do you see yourself after? Could you sit down and do this with us for uh, you? You were asking me beforehand, yeah. are we going to be breaking down all the races? And I was like, I was nervous. Uh, what what, what did it look? Was there like a camera? You no. look at us. Oh, okay, yeah. okay, okay, cool. Let's have a conversation. <laughs> Ignore Mac. <Yeah>. Yeah. <laughs> we um, always do. I could. I need to work on my takes and speaking slower. And stopping. There's there's some just basic grammar things I think that I could like help myself with it. But I mean, in general, yeah, I love it. I love what you guys do. It's so much fun. Um, and I mean, just fun shooting the shit. Right? Are, they, are the takes too hot? Is that the problem? Or are they not hot enough? <laughs> they're not hot enough. Well, no, they're just not succinct enough. You know, you guys are good at just like having the one liners or whatever. And I just kind of ramble. That's my that's my issue. Whenever I'm on podcasts, I listen to myself on podcasts, and I'm like, that was kind of insightful. But I spent like five more minutes talking about it, like getting to my point. You know, but so you're you're always a great writer. And yeah. I think maybe you know you have that time to. Break exactly. it down, build that structure. I see your Instagram posts probably have like a, a an outline <laughs> for that actually are written out because they're I so thoughtful. Need to start, I need to follow you and just start a like a uh, newsletter? email newsletter because oh, no, the yeah. space is full. Yeah. <laughs> it's very saturated oh, market right now. No, I think you're okay. <laughs> no, mine would just be my like the vulnerable newsletter, but that's always my Instagram post. Is like the vulnerable Instagram post. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of it's pretty old by now, <laughs> giving all your feelings out. So uh, you know, I guess if we can have some takes. Tonight, we watched the 1500 first round yesterday. Coming up on the semifinals, I guess 
as someone who has competed at that level before, do we have any hot takes? What do we think of this American squad? I mean, this American squad is, is great. I think my biggest thing, uh, sprints or something else, but middle distance, there's nothing like the middle distance rounds for just like how killer they are, right? Um, it's like even in the, I mean, even in the in the prelims, like it's it's literally every day is if if not you're all you have to be completely focused, right? Um, and it just because of that, it's so freaking nerve wracking watching. I mean, like I fully believe in our American squad. I think the fun thing about this year is there's not really like above and beyond. I mean, there's faith. And then beyond that, it's like the medal count is kind of, I think, more open. Um, but it's like this should you treat this as the final, right? More so than any other. Well, I don't know. I just think the middle distance races, because especially like it's not just all out where maybe in the sprints, if you're good, you're just going to go all out and you'll be fine or like whatever. But then in the middle distance races, <laughs> not whatever. I was, yeah, I was going to say like Maurice Green was here yesterday. <laughs> you probably have an alternate take to that. <laughs> I'll argue with anybody. And also, it's obviously my race. So I think it's the hardest because I think we're the best. <laughs> but I'm just I mean, it is. Um, it's like again, it can go the just the ways that things can mess up in middle distance races are are nerve like nerve wracking. That's one where I wish people who are the casual fan don't get the nuance because the rounds can be so, so cruel. Right. Yeah, but they can be so cruel. You're in the fast heat. You're in the slow heat. Yeah. You're in this or you, you know, it, it, there's four four spots and then you know four big cues and somehow you're the fifth person. Now you got to wait like that kind of drama and stuff. That I'm not sure if we get like it's amazing to sit and watch if you're really a fan and you're just like, well look at look at the steeplechase this morning. All the American girls were fourth, fourth, fourth. I was hanging out with Emma in the mix zone as we we're just yeah, you know, and you're just like, oh my gosh. Okay, I think they're gonna make it in, right? The first you're right? calculating all but the splits. I'm sure you understand where the bubble is, and you're yeah. looking, right? And you're yeah. just like, it's real, and you're trying to get through in minimal effort. So what am I doing in terms of conserving? And yet, what good does conserving do if I'm gonna be, yeah. you know, sixth and, and not move on? And I, I wish more people could see that because it is, or, or understand that because it is just, it it's really it. You know, you you can shake oh. watching that thing. And then again, for example, for tonight. The first round is like the heat of death. I mean, the first round, <laughs> like, I mean, right. they, they seem strangely not even in terms of like the talent in both. I don't know. Yeah, the 5K is crazy too. Yeah, but to, for tonight, it's like the if the first round happens to go slow and there's no time qualifiers, I do think that then people that should be in the final won't get in the final, which is also kind of... How, mm -hmm. how do we feel about time qualifiers in a 1500? Like, do we do we overvalue the time and like, should we be strictly big Q? Hmm. Yeah, for that reason. I mean, because the eight strictly big Q, right? Is or no? They've hmm. changed that. No, no, no. They go back and forth. I don't all understand over. what what who, who is in charge of that. <laughs> yeah, actually, I think Vin was. Vin. <laughs> Get it back over here. <laughs> actually, who? Yeah, God, who does that? That is such a good point because it has been for in the I think in twenty sixteen it was just straight four, and then last time it was. Uh, well, anyways. Yeah, I don't know how that all gets decided, but I agree with you because that's the thing. Tonight, for example, I would think you should do straight place qualifiers just six and six because i think again if the first heat goes slow that's like i mean if the first heat goes slow there's just a lot of people in there there's i mean someone's not making the final you know that's like should do you prefer to be in the first or second heat second do you this is why 1500 people shouldn't sit around wait and kick if you can run 333 <laughs> go run 333 <laughs> i was explaining I'm this back yesterday again. i know you're trying to explain to me and now i just feel like we've made a point for anderson that perhaps <laughs> run the time you're supposed yeah, to we run have another 1500 instead of leaving here. it to her i know my uh fiance is a swimmer and he's always making that stupid point and i'm just like no <laughs> you stupid don't point well, because <laughs> not that point that <laughs> stupid it point. was not a good point john <laughs> <He's always> <laughs> except <laughs> that he says the same dumb thing that you do yeah thanks i'm kidding i mean i don't know there is, I mean, that's These why are the takes that were too hot. <laughs> exactly. That's why you. That's why we're not in lanes. Like, it, part of it is a race, right? I mean, yeah. Mm -hmm. If you have the, if you have the guts to do that, then yes. But I also think that there is something to be said for conserving energy. Everyone thinks they have the fastest kick. Everybody, especially the men. But. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I was. I. I'm glad you're here because yesterday I was trying to hold down the fort. I was explaining like in the 1500, it's that sweet spot in which it's a very controlled sprint. Like you're so, you're moving too <laughs> fast that there's not like it's. You can still get around people, but it's easier to be behind. He explained mm -hmm. it well and eloquently, right? I, I, but you still it, just disagree. doesn't mean I don't agree with you. Yeah, it doesn't doesn't mean I agree with you. But no, I. You you, you made your case was wonderful. I just don't know that I'm sold Thanks, on the yeah. fact that. Wasn't that if I can run then. faster than the next guy, then why am I going to run behind him? Yeah. 
I agree with that to a certain extent, but when everyone's kind of the same, you're putting yourself mm -hmm. out there. I mean, uh, also, isn't there some kind of, isn't there a little bit of benefit from drafting? A tiny, tiny, tiny I'd say benefit? it's more mental so, than at yeah. that speed. It's like, like I, a, it is a bit. Yeah. I know he's, a, he's 80 years old, but I always argue with Larry Ross, too. He's like, you know, you run a long <laughs> way if you're at the outside lane. You run like, if you're if you're on the rail and you're on the line of run, you ran like all to, maybe six meters, <laughs> yeah. if that, over 50. Yeah, you're Running un fine. unimpeded is probably one of the more right. important. Right, but yeah. yeah, so okay, well, I'll get in there with some other people and let's see how many spike marks I can get in my shin. <laughs> Just clip somebody's shoe and go down. Like, I feel like as a risk-reward goes, I'll take the extra six meters on the outside be safe. You know about this, Chris, right? I'm, this is all just <laughs> so technical for me. I'm like, I've never run that fast. Or I'm just always by myself in last place. So, yeah. so how is it being here? You're obviously, you know, I'm sure a year ago you would have hoped to be here competing, um, and we can dive into that more if you would like. But, um, you know, you're here cheering on teammates. How does that feel? Is that like a different energy being here? Like how nervous are you? Yelling for Corey and Emma from for different countries too. I mean, with Dom and this is sort, yeah, sort of Dom. like, do you have like a South Africa hat you have to put on and then take it <laughs> off and then like put on the Team USA sweater? <laughs> I definitely should be doing that. You're right. <laughs> I didn't prepare enough today at like ten. Aisha and I texted Prottlier and we're like, I think we should make shirts. And then <laughs> <laughs> we're like, oh shit. <laughs> Sidious meets Etsy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so didn't get the shirts in time, but in the, the thought that matters, uh, I honestly. I think if you're not going to be racing, being here is better. This is what I was talking, talking to her as well. Like um, being at home and cheering, you then just like go back to your like life and you're alone. <laughs> Versus being here, I have friends um, that I haven't seen in a while, and that's fun. <laughs> and honestly, when I, there is something different, I'm sure you know this, Kyle. Also, like or you see this now, when you're here racing, it's just I'm just in my hotel room. Like I don't see anybody. I I I love it, and I get super dialed in. Or not here, but like in general, out of track meet. Um, but I really am not someone who's super social. I'm not cheering because it's like too much nervous energy. So being able to like have that nervous energy is like I don't know. It's fun in a different way. I have a couple suggestions. Eight thirty, Sidious Mag group run tomorrow morning. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. What's eight thirty still or nine fifteen because of the marathon? Uh, yeah, then it's nine fifteen. Nine fifteen tomorrow. How long was it? Because I walked by where you guys were finishing today. It's How like long did you four, go? four and a half miles. Yeah, you, you know, eight minute pace <laughs> up front. Um, but you know, being able to participate in some of the community events that are mm -hmm. going on because obviously every brand is here activating, doing different things, and there's a lot of fun stuff. But then the other thing, you've probably never even like floated the river in Eugene. No, actually, I haven't. <laughs> this is actually, I actually. We brought... wanted to do a group float, oh. but we thought it was dangerous and made a liability. <laughs> <laughs> if you have everyone sign that this is not a group yeah. float, we are not on a city of We need to take our insurance policy. <laughs> We're going to lose some high school kids. I actually did bring bathing suits for that reason. It's like, in case anyone wants to float, I am prepared. <laughs> so let me know if the non group float happens. Yeah. Well, can we bring your fiance the swimmer along just in case? <laughs> you know, life saving <laughs> techniques, so he could be helpful. He's, he's not here. He was like, I'm not. He's like, if I'm, I'm going to go on a vacation. <laughs> like, Eugene's a vacation. What are you talking about? No, but that, I, I think it is a very unique uh, standpoint to be an athlete at a meet when you're not competing. And it, it is, you get a totally different atmosphere and experience, and you see it from different angles, and it's fun. Like, I think whenever I'm at a race now, in my mind, it's just like, wait, why is this not the most popular sport in the world? Because sitting in that stadium during the 10K was the most electric. Mm -hmm. Like that last lap, the place was going wild. And I just know that if I brought in someone who is used to watching, you know, soccer or football or baseball, and I sat them down. I was like, I know you don't know what's going on. Like she runs for Kenya. She runs for Ethiopia. They want to beat each other. Go. <laughs> like, <Yeah. laughs> they would love it. And mm -hmm. it's just a universal thing. And now I think on the other side, I see that even more clearly, and that's why it's even more frustrating that it's not more popular. I 100% agree with you, it's funny, yeah, I mean, and I think probably even as an athlete, you don't even, I didn't even let myself get that invested in races, because it's too much emotional energy. But yeah, I mean, we were screaming at the top of our lungs for that <laughs> last, and again, for people that I'm not even here to, to cheer for. Like, <laughs> I mean, I was really excited for Carissa also, because um, she was doing so well, but I mean, just like watching Helen, I mean, or just watching them battle it out, it was, it was incredible. I'm still buzzing from it. Yeah, you weren't making shirts for them. I know. I didn't no. make shirts for them. They didn't even no. shirt, <laughs> they're not even shirt worthy. <laughs> and there no I was. Day shirt? Yeah. That's crazy. That's how good it was. But. but you're totally right. Why isn't it more popular? See, but I think that's the easiest thing. We talk about it. Like, it is the easiest sport to understand. Mm -hmm. Hi, that's you, you got to the tape first. That's it. You threw farther than the other person. Mm -hmm. 
try to explain to somebody that's not from here baseball. Mm-hmm. Are you kidding me? Uh, yeah. And then some I guy box, and that. now it's even crazier, <laughs> yeah. right? Or even football. Why were they now? Why are they going back to talk these things over before they do it again? You know, it's it's not that hard. Mm-hmm. With uh, someone like Emma, who is dominant in her event, like you, you as a teammate, like how nervous do you get? Because it's like you kind of think, I was like, oh, she's gonna do well. Like this is just you know the first round, but like today, like in particular, like how like was it just screaming, like nervous energy all throughout? Yeah, um, I wasn't. I mean, I wasn't actually n- that nervous for her race because you always know that she's gonna be solid. Emma gonna Emma. Well, Emma gonna Emma. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna freaking Emma for like ten years. <laughs> it's yeah. like it actually blows my mind that she has won ten years, uh, won the U.S. champs for ten years. I like, what have I done? I've never been consistent at, at that with anything in my life. Um, <laughs> but yes, she. It's more. I mean, it's it's the next thirty minutes where you have to then wait. Um, I think actually she was smart in ways like when they, I mean, they went through fast for 2K. I know one. Yeah. It was unnecessary. Exactly. So but. they went through fast for 2K and what she was saying then after was like that she realized it was fast. And so it makes sense to like, why, why are you going to, you're not going to go try to run 901 for this prelim, but then it ends up like, then you're kind of taking a little bit of a gamble then by pulling mm-hmm. it back. Um, so it's. It's the waiting for the next 30 minutes where you're pretty sure it's like, this is definitely going to make it through, but just like enough. <laughs> um, I mean, I've been in that position before where I've had to wait for little for the, for the little queue. Um, I called my mom and she was laughing. She Because when I was in Rio, I honestly, it's kind of similar. Like I under, I underestimated the first round. I was like, oh, I don't need to go that quick. I ended up in, I ended up what well, I needed, I needed the, the, the little queue. Mm-hmm. Um, and in my mind, I was like, oh, I'm saving energy, whatever. Um, but then, like, literally, you have to wait for five more rounds to make sure. And, like, everyone... And my mom That's was like... That's a lot of energy. Yeah, exactly. Right? And then uh, my mom was like, I was booing people in the stands. Like, I was actually <laughs> booing or, like, cheering if, if people went slow. But you're right. Like, that's mm. the place I'm, like, actually cheering for people to fall after that, you know? Because you want them to... You just want to make sure it's all, it's all good. Um, but I think as an athlete, I've been in that position before where it's like, okay, that was probably... could Like, yeah, obviously, ideally, you want the big Q, but... It also just means you just have to reset now. It is a helpless feeling, though, right? Because you just sit there and you do, <laughs> what, what are, I'm going to do nothing. Oh, my gosh, yeah. Especially five. You have to sit through five rounds. That's really. In the eight. because Well, that was yeah. in Rio. Yeah, there was like, like five, five more. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Can we dive into your running right now? It sounds like you're you're back running mm. a little bit. Wearing my watch and everything. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I, last year, y- you just missed out on making the Olympic team. But then you had one of the most unbelievable postseason redemption tours I forgot what you guys were calling it, uh, but like, not just like, what was it called? Summer of Kate. The Summer yeah. of Kate, yeah. <laughs> the ass kicking Summer of Kate. You had one of the most, <laughs> like, one of the best summers of not just like redemption, but just like of 800 meter runners in the US ever. Like, you, you were on fire. And then I know that since you, you struggled with some long COVID, but you're back now. And how, how do we feel? Feeling good. Feeling like this summer, this is not the summer of Kate. This is <laughs> summer of floating the river. Well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> summer of Kate having fun. <laughs> it, well, last summer was the best ever, so I guess that yeah, that was more fun. But whatever. Um, yes, I last year last year was great. Obviously, it's tough to miss it, but I hadn't. I mean, it, yeah, it ended up being so much fun. Um, I basically was fifteen hundred. After re, after twenty sixteen, I was just like went straight to the fifteen. And I was fifteen for three years or four. I guess no, four years. And so it was my first time back running the eight. And part of me just like it kind of took it takes a little while when you're back to an event just to get more used to it. Also, obviously, the 800 team is like the, 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 the toughest to make in the U.S. But just even how I looked at the in, at in the, the world in the, in the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah the 800 <laughs> team is insane in the U.S. Um, but even just like how I looked in that that race versus that afterwards, I just needed like, I mean, kind of to get more practice. I don't know. Anyway, now I. I honestly, I was just really excited to do it again. I think it's funny as an athlete, I've always been so patient. I'm like an older athlete for a middle distance runner. Like whenever I look at the birthdays. <laughs> uh, are you 80? Are I'm you're... in the 80s. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I love the 80s. Are you serious? No, no. But I mean, but it's like, first of all, I'm super, super proud of it. So like, this is awesome. There's like, like 2004s out there right now. <laughs> well, I was, I you don't know what a VCR is. <laughs> I was, uh, I ended up ranked third at, in the world athletics rankings. And it was like 04, 04, 88. Because it's like Keely and a thing. And then me. <laughs> Which I was like, okay, that's 
awesome. I don't know. It's like just totally. Do you buy their beer? Beer's on me. I'll go to the store. Yeah. <laughs> um. Anyway, it's um. So what was the point of that? That uh, oh, I, I think I've been so patient throughout my career, and probably in some ways like maybe a little bit too much, but like very much like making sure I always am recovering and not getting too injured, whatever, whatever. And I think I very much after last year was just like, I don't want to ever get out of shape again. Like I'm just gonna run this out. I'm just gonna run this until I'm done. You know? I don't know. I mean, just like I think you get so excited and get like get that bug. And I just really didn't, I, it's almost like I didn't want to reset or something. Not that that's the whole reason. Um, I got sick, but I think a little bit of it was like, I got sick and I didn't give my, I, I was just being stubborn. Um, and was like, I'm going to blow through this. I'm going to still, I'm going to go out I indoors. I'm going to go outdoors. I'm just going to world this forever. And then it's like, your body's like, oh, actually no, this, <laughs> uh, you have to stop running <laughs> basically. Are you able to work out and such now? Um, Yes, but we're taking it very slow because like the whole thing with it is basically like your body kind of fritzes a little bit um, with this. Again, it was after getting COVID. I didn't get COVID that bad, but I just trained. I was like, I didn't get COVID that bad, but for some reason I just like had a reaction afterwards. And the, it was the hard workouts where you really notice it's like you, it's like you're not getting oxygen into your muscles, basically, for some reason. Chris has that problem. Yeah, yeah I, I constantly <laughs> am running. I'm like, is yeah. it long COVID, yeah. even though I've never <laughs> tested positive, or am I just really bad at running? Right. Right. Or do I not have muscles? Maybe that's the problem. Yeah, I think that's, that's exactly <laughs> everything on it. Yeah. Um, I did for a while. I was blaming everything on it. <laughs> at one point, Joe was like, it's okay, perfect. Kate. <laughs> it's like, I don't know. Uh, your fiance, you're like, I can't make dinner tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I long mean, COVID. Actually, you do the laundry. Actually, no. <laughs> it was so bad. Anyway, um, but yeah, so now I'm running. I'm running like 60, 65 miles a week, uh, doing like workouts based on heart rate, um, but and not hard workouts yet. The idea being like this season, we're not even trying. We're just like, we're full on. Let's take the blessing in disguise or whatever and go for a long build. Mm -hmm. So the 800 is the hardest team to make. Yes. Really? Because the women's shot's really hard to make, don't you think, Raven Saunders? So, right, the women's shot put team's hard to make. <laughs> the women's hundred meter, uh, hundred hurdles is really hard to make. The point Not I'm getting at is like we've got. Kate's bias, and I'm that's biased. A, that's my, allowed. My larger point was going to be like we have kick-ass women to watch. Totally. Like they could drive the sport in this country. Yeah. Like Serena and Venus did for the women's tennis for a long time and made it more popular than men. Oh, 100 percent. And I mean, honestly, I think the cool thing also is like, I mean, even here, those teams are hard to make because we it's you could potentially sweep medals like we could sweep medals in those events, which mm -hmm. would be crazy. Mac, am I allowed to take your point and make it my own? <laughs> OK, so something that Mac has been, uh, you know, ranting about a lot, which is a really good point, is that, you know, uh, across the sports world right now, there's a lot about equity of men's and women's sports. Mm -hmm. And I feel like. And I only feel this way because Mac told me to feel this way. And I was like, that's a good point. Um, is that track is inherently equitable. Like we have every event. We have the men's and the women's. Yeah. And the women's, especially in the U.S., is like so competitive on the mm -hmm. international level. And I feel like again, because Mac, uh, that we have to own that a little bit more because it's an amazing story of just how competitive American women are on the international stage, specifically in track and field. And as other sports are trying to catch up, we should be like their role model, like try to get on our level in terms of women's opportunities in track and field. Well, and it's not um, outside. I mean, the the decathlon and the heptathlon are a little different. But other than that, right, the, the hurdle is the only one where they run. 10, 10 meters short. And that's Everything else steps. But if you look at it, it's it's not just strictly <laughs> the athletic. The light bulb just went off. It's, it's <laughs> not just right. Yeah, but but you know, gone are the days where the women ran the three, and you know, Mary Sling's falling down the three, and she's not in the five, and they, you know, they they have all the same program now, which is great. But the other part is, it's not just that you have uh, power play coaches that are women. You know, I, I point this out when Georgia went looking for a new head track coach. They went and found the best, okay, who's the best coach we can find? And they hired an African-American woman, like, in the South. Like, it's unheard of. There's still room to grow, but... It's yes, by all, by all means. But the opportunities beyond just running, you know, Sarah Hopkins at uh, Minnesota right, or, or Dilji Taylor and what she's done. Like, their their representation is not strictly on the track. It, there's, there's a lot of really um, 
important roles being played by women and leadership roles by women for young gals, whether they are following you as athletes or after athletes to go into co- like there's just a, it is it is you know if I can borrow from Mac like everybody else is, but, <laughs> right but it is it, it's got the the equity of it the inclusion of it is really it's it's an amazing sport in that regard. So, Kate, I guess before we let you go, uh, who are some of the other female athletes outside of your training partners that you're really a big fan of and that uh, you're going to be rooting pretty hard for over the next couple of days? I kept it to female because everyone we've asked this has said Fred Curley. And so like, just assume you'll say Fred. <laughs> yeah. We just say it into the mic. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, I feel like I'm excited for every single race. What are the ones coming up? Uh, I mean, well... Can I, tonight's a 1500 and watching, I mean, I run with Corey McGee and I feel like she's, and, um, and I don't know, it's, it's so, I mean, I'm, should I take my teammates out of this? Is it, are they? Take no. your teammate out. Take okay. Yeah. Okay. What are the other big races? What, what, what are we the, the women's hundred up? tonight. Oh, is it tonight? No. Yeah. No, tomorrow. Which one? Women's hundred. That's Jamaica. Do you, do you follow the sprints? Is that something that I personally like? When I was competing, I, I followed the other events a little bit, and then as soon as I retired, I was like, "Whoa, look at all these <laughs> way more sports! Who are these fast <laughs> dudes?" Yeah. yeah. Honestly, I have been started following them more. Honestly, thanks to lap count, I feel like as I've clipped that, Mac. Clip that, <laughs> clip that. <laughs> yeah. Everyone heard that? <laughs> I didn't know. Were we doing shout outs? Yeah. Good. We're shouting out to ourselves. Good. Yep. I mean, because you're right. Like, I think. I, for a while, was in the middle distance bubble um, where I would just like would just be in my own. And then um, but I think seeing just having some basic basic like someone tell a story is getting me more excited about different uh, different events. If I told you I wanted to replace the mixed four by four and put in a DMR, are you with me or not? Yes. I think it'd be awesome. <laughs> OK, this yes, is yes. yes, but the DMR. <laughs> Doesn't it just kind of? It just is just like kind of the miler is like what makes the difference in that race. You're talking to the world record holder. Uh, it's actually the 1200 legs most important. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Yeah, yeah. I think I agree. 1200 legs. <laughs> All right, okay. so your team four by eight. Yeah, team four by eight. We'll also cut my hand. No, the, the DMR is great. Okay. Uh, I yeah. agree. Some kind of distance, distance relay would be fun. I just think something beyond like the sprinters get the four by one and the four by four. They get them both. Mm-hmm. And you talk about middle distance and all those. Like I feel like there's a spot where it'd be cool if we could. Get you guys one of them. I mean, it's the reason people. We're going to the Vin walk. Vin and, yeah, you know, <laughs> right. the day Seb's there. We're right. Gonna... But have you, like, you've been in the Assembly Championship, right? That, that when they run the DMR, like, coaches will kill for the DMR. They will scratch their miler in the open <laughs> because, like, well, we can't win the team title on that. But guess what? Who cares if you could win the Assembly Individual title? We're going to take you and we're going to drag your ass into the, into yeah. the DMR. Like, they will just. True. Yeah. They will. Track coaches will, uh, distance coaches will kill for that race. When it comes to so that's all I just yeah, I, I I would like to switch those up. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. Um, I also, after saying that I am trying to be unbiased, I am very excited for the 800, mostly because <laughs> the women's eight at the trials was the best. Like Ajay, watching Ajay do that was, I think, as someone who it's just so easy to start thinking like, oh, a thing's gonna win everything, and she probably she will. But it just like it's fun <laughs> when <laughs> it is just generally I don't know. I think seeing. That everyone, that it's always a race. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter PR. It's always going to be a race. Here's a question. Ajay, uh, you know this. A lot of people don't necessarily. How good could she be at the 1500? Oh, my gosh. Right? Like, <laughs> <laughs> Why would she want to be, you know? Right. I don't know. It's just like, she's already so good. She's got a world title. <laughs> Keep playing eight. the hits. That's <laughs> it. Yeah. Right. Right. I don't know if you guys have done the math, but it's like twice as far. <laughs> <laughs> Close. Yeah. Why do you think Fred's going to have such a hard time going back to the 400? Because it's a lot farther than 100. <laughs> Yeah. All right, Kate, before we let you go, you got to sign the yes, city's the flag. Oh. flag and yeah, I'll take that. Thank you. And we'll see you at the group runs. <laughs> yeah, see, yeah, see you at the yeah, group runs. Yeah. And <laughs> the float, the non-group float. The non-group yeah. float as soon as we get those. A signatures. lefty. You're actually signing the float waiver. This oh. is. <laughs> <laughs> you turn it over, you're saying the city of Mag is not liable for when your tube yeah. flips. <laughs> I'm a lefty. I have the worst handwriting. I've noticed, it's funny, I got really excited because I wear my watch in a different hand because I'm a lefty. I don't know why people do that, but you know, like you always wear it on the opposite hand. Mm-hmm. But then I have teammates, some people I train with who do the same thing, but they're right handed. So they're going against the grain. I don't know. Yeah, I'm opposite. Yeah. Yeah. Kate, anyway. thanks so much for kicking it with us. Bye. Thank you. Hey, right, everyone, clap it up Bye for around. Kate Grace. <laughs> All right, one more guest. 
I think. She's been waiting patiently. Yes, yeah, she has. Which is good, because um, if she was mad at us, that would be bad. Oh, can I, yeah. can I say one thing? What yeah. do you got? Oh, grab the mic. I just ca- I was fangirling, but I just caught her. She was like, um, for like 10 minutes or something, you were photobombing people that were taking photos in front of... Oh. <laughs> Earlier today, she was literally just there, like, um, people were taking photos in front of the sign, the Oregon sign, and she was behind the sign, just like walking around, and then she would like kind of twerk a little bit or something. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've blown up on uh, on TikTok, and, and, and Raven is great on TikTok, so I think you guys need to do some sort Have of... Have you collab. blown up Gosh, on TikTok? No, I haven't blown up on TikTok. <laughs> Your TikToks are really good as our Raven. Yeah, so if you're watching yeah, maybe this, follow this. Kate Grace on TikTok. Maybe after this. Have, have Jasmine and Caitlin got you yeah. into TikTok yet? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I should. I yeah, right, I'll too. take that one. Yeah, you go do your TikTok. Raven, right. if you, you come on over. Grace, here we Introduce go. Who we have waiting. joining us? Got... Olympic silver medalist. That's right. Bowerman finalist. Yeah, I, I remember the videos of uh, you interviewing her at the at the Bowerman Awards. Raven so you two, she had a great hat. <laughs> you two go right. way back. Beautiful oh, hat. Oh, yeah. Big old to hat. That. Yeah, well, I cover a lot of the SEC. So back I- in the day when you were hotty toddy and the whole thing. Oh, yeah, you know that. Rub yeah. Nation. Wait, do this. So we throw with that hand? Yeah. yeah I don't know how they, I don't know what give it away that I, how I figured that out. And what are the other two rings? What do you got there? Uh, these are actually my very first two national championship rings. Uh, this outdoor ring was actually won on this track. So, yeah, very important to me. And that's <laughs> when you were at uh, Southern? Yep, SIU, Saluki Nation. That's, that's uh, there's Edwardsville and Carbondale. You're Carbondale, right? Carbondale. There you go. Definitely Carbondale. Saluki, by the way, is an Egyptian <laughs> racing dog, if anybody doesn't know that. <laughs> What would we that? do without you, John? I just I know <laughs> just more useless stuff than yeah. anything. But yeah, it's a racing dog. Raven, so. we were just talking to Kate, and she was saying like it's it's even though you're not competing, like it's good to be here. You feel the same way? I mean, you you got on a plane right away as soon as the first opportunity popped up for you to okay. come out and watch the championships. I mean, absolutely. I find that you know anybody that knows me knows that I'm a I'm a fan of track and field. Uh, it doesn't matter the event um, or what's going on. I'm a fan. Like I love this sport. <laughs> Has it always been that way, or was that something that developed? Uh, always. Um, really, when I got into track and field, uh, I saw so many different people from so many different places that, um, you know, when you get a chance, especially your first world junior team, to really meet and talk to other people that are very passionate about the events that they do. I mean, like, who am I to not sit there and watch them and watch them give their all? And then I'm like, man, all right, I'm fired up. Like, let me <laughs> let me go ahead and do what I got to do. When you were, but you were in college, Ole Miss, and because they they build that program on throwers mm-hmm. and distance people, yep. right? And there's no more demented group than oh, the yeah. Ole Miss distance guys, right? Oh, they are just <laughs> goofballs, it's, head to toe. It's absolutely. Everybody thinks Engel's an outlier. He's not. He no. was right at home with Demanic and Tobin and, and all these other guys. Craig was like middle tier for like the craziness right. that we had for that team. <laughs> like it really was a standard. Think about that, people. That to be on that team, especially in that distance group, that you had to be a little bit psycho. So like I would help them like filter in the kids, and I'm like, ah, oh, no, nah, that kid's not crazy. No. <laughs> they're they're like too mentally stable. Like mm, they're, they're not right for it. They're not going to fit in here. <laughs> right. Yeah. They're they were fantastic people. Uh, and so I'm going to touch on what uh, Kate said, which she thought the 800 is the hard, like the hardest event f- to make in a women's. Team. The shot put team is hard. Yeah, it's definitely gotten. Um, it's progressed over the years, really. Um, the standard that we're all throwing, uh, especially compared to like previous years. Um, I'd say that. Probably that 2016 team's probably like mm-hmm. top tier. Uh, outside of an Olympic year, this has probably been one of the, you know, most impressive uh, events. I'll actually be commentating tonight for the final as well. For who? Women's shot put. At World's Athletic? NBC, yeah. Oh, NBC. Yeah, NBC. Damn. Wow, are you excited? You, I need you to oh, be on yeah. TV. Easily, man. Did they tell you like no cursing? <laughs> hey, they better be ready. I don't know. I don't know. Listen, no cursing, I, no twerking. See, I'm I, all alone on the world feed. I could use you up there. Man, listen, I might come over. Shoot. I'm not <laughs> held liable. Three more steps so. up. Hey, let's go. Let's go. I'm here to do whatever you guys need. Is this your first time doing it? Very first time. So, um, <laughs> they threw you right in the fire. Hey, listen, like I said, I will not be held liable for anything. Uh, I, I know I, 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 can, I can tone it down, I can definitely tone it down, you know. I, I but I'm definitely gonna have fun. Um, definitely gonna put some more energy and light, especially into these women. Um, I feel like we definitely deserve it for like the pure power. Um, being somebody that's experienced in it and knowing what it takes. Um, I'm really excited to really have this opportunity to give these ladies their flowers and, you know, 
talk mess because they still my competitors at the end of the day too. <laughs> Anytime we get the chance to chat with, uh, you know, field event stars, it's sort of like there's very, you know, much frustration about, you know, not enough airtime or sometimes like you guys are, I mean, you get your own live feed sometimes, but right. you want you want the attention on, on the main feed that everyone right. is watching. So what what is it that you hope can be improved about the presentation around the jumps. I know this morning you probably were watching mm -hmm. some of it and you're like, I have to sit through this 10,000 and like, I wish you would show me a couple <laughs> right. more jumps or throws. Yeah, but like, you know, even though the 10,000 was, was very exciting, like there is a whole nother side to the sport that also deserves. The, the no. Love. And, and that's, that's very fair. And I mean, like to be able to give respect to all events, I get it. Really. I feel like with this, especially with the 10 K like show the first three laps, which is where like most of the action happens. And then show that last mile where it's like, you start watching people start pushing and shoving and booking it that last like 800 meters. Um, like I said, I'm a student all in the middle. Like, you know, you end up forgetting and everyone else in the stadium starts watching and paying attention to the other events. And I feel like, you know, the, the crowd at home should be able to have that, that same courtesy. Um, because we have the luxury of being able to watch. And um, man, there were some great comp that that men's hammer today deserved to be mainstream, especially they threw some bomb. Oh my god, I was out there. <laughs> I don't know if y'all they might have heard me on the stream cutting up. <laughs> I'm like, yo, this is insane. And the women's high jump as well. Like, you know, Rachel coming back though she got like mm -hmm. you know like her coming back on that last one to get that call. I'm like, yo, like you can curse on this feed. Probably. Oh shit! All right. <laughs> 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 they get let loose. Yeah. Get it out now. Get it out now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, did, I did this when you say that because all the time, the biggest complaint we get when we do it is like they show the 10,000 like, I can't believe they cut away after lap four to show some field event and because the distance people, they want to see every stride of yeah. every lap. Yeah, I just, Every I lap. think that there's a And I get it, like, I don't want to miss a breakaway, <laughs> because, I, you know, when something happens, but, but, but you, have, it's okay, because like, there's, there's, there's some times, because yeah, like, there are times when you're just going around in a circle. Because uh, what meet this was is, it? They had one recently where they, like, did where's the split Kate? cam. Get Kate back here. <laughs> there are times in the 10,000 where you're just ticking off laps. But right? I think, I think it, it's a very simple thing in which, you know, why not make the field events the focus during that, you know, 20 minutes in the middle and have the commentators talking about that? And then is it that hard to just put in a little corner just so that way people who are interested in that event? And that's the that's the challenge, obviously, of there only being the ability to, you know, there's 42 Still events and man, I only have one TV. The, the best thing that they can do, especially especially like you talk about that 20 minutes and I've seen it beforehand on one of the other world streams. Where on a side, on a corner, they do the listing and they just shift people in mm -hmm. the race mm -hmm. so you can see who is where in the race while also being able to watch the competition. So that way people can kind of keep up and see where people are moving at, but also, you know, have the actual live footage of the field events. Yeah, I, I just think we shouldn't cannibalize other events to right. just because like shot put isn't getting enough doesn't mean like all right well like let's take away from others i just think that there is presentation i think there's scheduling difference especially and something that was nice today in the stadium and this is i'm anti 10 day long meets i think it's too long Man. um but the one benefit is is like we are we do have the time and the space to give the attention to those events and i mm -hmm. felt like today during the 10K, especially you know before the 10K, all eyes were on that hammer throw because yeah. there was no there was nothing going on in the track. Right. It was nice that it was in the stadium. By the way, Did you know this is only the second time it's been in the stadium. Usually they throw it on the outside, yeah. nice little weight, but they were actually in the stadium, Olympic which made trials 2016 was the yeah, first time. There's a huge difference when it when it comes through. When they're when throwing they, hammers and javelins in the stadium, I'm like, I want to be behind them. Plus, yes, it increases so. the, the 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 potential danger. Like, even though nobody's <laughs> really in danger, it still seems kind of yeah. cool. Like, can you just see that, right? <laughs> we should, to make it more interesting, we should put a bunch of fans. <laughs> just see how Honestly. close it like, is. Like, just it right underneath. And then it's like, oh, obviously you're going to throw the, sure. the hammer over 40 meters. I finally like, feel like safe. we got a Don't fair worry. fight. <laughs> I'm usually with a runner over here, and it's the runners over there. I'm finally, I have a field event person here yeah. with me. I feel like, I feel safe now yeah. where's chris lie i'm he's I'm, a runner yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. He's he the runner category. yeah. yeah. i mean at heart he is anyway i don't know <laughs> if he is in lungs and leg but he is in we heart. preach we're big throws guys so we try our best uh raven what yes. uh outside of track i mean i i've always been curious like what other sports do you like to kind of watch outside that you you maybe think like oh they're doing something right we just had this conversation with with vin where it's like taking cues from other sports like, what could what could track learn from I don't know, women's basketball or, uh, you know, Formula One, whatever it is. 
Uh, in all honesty, I feel like, especially because we're so performance based in the sport, I feel like track and field needs to take a, a you know a page out of WWE's book if you want to be honest. Okay. Um, when you talk about having so many different athletes, having so many different personalities, having so many different events, um, I feel like that's actually something that can be capitalized on upon, like you know, being able to showcase or allowing athletes to bring more personality, asking athletes what their nicknames are and addressing them by that doing more of those intros and allowing for athletes or providing props for athletes to come through and use these props and get dressed up and actually do meets or being able to like for um, the American track league series, like doing like an exhibition style where we chop it down to like 40 meter dash, but still pay these people or chop it down to pros versus Joe's and having like, you know, bringing that back from like, what was that? The Mm eighties. Just really for us, we need to get our fan engagement really, you know, up. So that more people that are, you know, aren't really familiar with the sport can kind of come in and see what it's like and then showing them, you know, the world that is track and field. But I feel like the model that we have now to be successful isn't going to be the model of the future. So with how strong you are, you've never gotten a call or anything from the WWE or like any sort of wrestling? Hey, on, nah, not yet. I know they're going to they're gonna want me eventually. I already, I already Look into the camera. Hey, I've been watching y'all since since the very beginning. If you want me to put a smack down on all y'all females, listen, I'm already coming with the drip. Wow. Already coming with it. <laughs> so the last couple of years, especially, I feel like you've taken ownership of your brand. Like you're, you're not hiding who you are anymore and you're letting people do it. She got the logo but, on her head. Yeah, people oh, yeah. people know Brand who new. Raven is now and <laughs> because of that, uh, you know, I bet you maybe a few years ago you could go to a meet and you, you maybe an autograph here or there, but mm-hmm. now probably since you've really embraced the fact that you are who you are and you're showing it to the world, like what's the reaction like now when you go to Rave? Oh, sorry. Means, I say. <laughs> uh, you know, it is Raven right now, you know, what I mean? but uh, it's it's actually a lot more. Uh, one thing that I find, too, especially uh, which is why I really started doing this is a lot more like younger girls and guys coming up to me because I know that this sport or like, you know, especially in sports for women, it's been very tough for us to come into our own and, you know, really be ourselves fully or constantly feeling like there was a certain particular model that we had to fit in in order to be successful alongside stress about trying to perform so while not being able to be yourself and trying to perform it became too much so um the reactions have been like immense you know really just getting a chance to be hands-on with people and you know trying to show them like really spread my confidence into them because you can kind of tell when people come up to you if they have it or if they don't or like the fact of like it's that part of myself that they do you know kind of connect with so were you surprised at that because so often we hear about people that you know hide because they're worried right mm-hmm. the, the 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 there's a guy it was just a high school football coach but he wrote talks about the twin thieves and he said it's not just people's fear of failure that that is the hard part it's also their fear of judgment and that people are going to watch and they're going to judgment because it's that, that's even more than failure. we always know that people get back up and fear of judgment is much hard to overcome so you once you get by those have you gone out and went wow okay this world's here all the time i wish i had welcomed it in a lot sooner right. Um, it wasn't necessarily like the, the fear of judgment. It was uh, more so like, you know, fitting in. You know what I mean? Um, you know, college, they're like, oh, you got to act this way. You got to dress this way. You know, don't get tattoos. Um, don't do this. Don't do that. Well, tattoos don't come off. Yeah, they okay, don't. They soon. don't. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I see a cool tattoo right there. Oh, yeah, there. yeah. We got the so. USA right there. But um, really, it was more so about me actually learning myself and then learning to embrace who I was. And uh, really just bringing that to the forefront in this sport. Mm-hmm. What do the other throwers see when you're doing you and you're putting on a show? Are they like, oh, here goes Raven again? Or are you like, come on, you guys should do this too. Like, that would help all of us if everyone was willing to be themselves. And think of the fans and the presentation. Anyone that knows me, especially the conversations that I have behind the scenes <laughs> with um, these athletes, that's all I advocate for. Um, Well, the main thing I advocate for, because I know that, you know, my personality and the swag that I bring is is definitely something that's unique. But I know everybody has their own lane that they can actually bring to the table. And I really preach to them that, yo, if we all do this, they have no other choice but to put us on the mainstream. Because, yo, when you got four or five girls that are out there like that are showing, oh, I got the long hair and I got the nails and I have the style, then 
one, it's more fan engagement because now you have your own following. I have a following. Now our followings can go at each other. Now it makes the competition that much more interesting to watch because they're like, oh, no, nope, I want the girl with the crazy hair. Now nah, I want the girl that's always yelling. I want, you know, like it, it just adds a different layer to it. The same as what I talk about the WWE having so many different personas. It, uh, I always go to this. Everybody's so worried about their piece of the pie instead of growing the pie. Yes. If we grow the pie. So now you're coming back pieces. around. We're, we're not, we can leave the whole 10K alone. <laughs> Uh, no, yeah. no, we I'm take not saying I don't want to. I don't want to bore. I don't want to bore got the two pies. pies. They got wanna, two pies, man. Right. They, they got enough pie to go around. Right, you already got a half hour. You're gonna run. Are you kidding? You can get through the first three rounds in a half hour, say, right? That's like a whole quarter of basketball. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> but yeah, it's only one attempt. You know, in throwing you get six. Man. What should we know about uh, the field tonight? Because honestly, I'm gonna bite. My, I'm gonna because I'm gonna go look. Welcome to the Gong Show, and everybody's gonna boo me. Uh, but I totally. This is a Chase Healy show. It is. Yeah. No, we're down with her, Chase Healy. We're good. Uh, oh, get, anyway, you're not uh, a fan. what? Uh, yeah, gong all the way. I'm going yeah. gong. Yeah, she, you, 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 <laughs> like, you like her to win. I'm going gong, gong, or uh, I won't do, do move from uh, Portugal. Portugal. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, you know, gong through. We were talking a little bit about this yesterday. You know, in the qualifiers, do we take anything away from the qualifiers? Like she, she launched it. She didn't have to go that far. Gong is always like a competitor. She always shows up. Um, that's one thing that. Because I study the people that I compete against. Um, that's I'm like a basketball player, a football player in that way. I study everyone. So I, I know and I recognize certain patterns with people and all of those things. And one thing about Gong, too, especially her coming out, like, I mean, this is probably, what, her first competition of the season? Yeah, that was, like, like I didn't see any results. And I was 19, like, oh, this might be her last one. But no, she yeah. just always shows up. Listen, and that, that's the thing about certain people, especially um, she had that whole year. Because I talk about, especially, like, after an Olympic year, you have to reset. Yo, it's, it's, it's so major mentally. So her actually taking that time mm -hmm. and then waiting until, like, she knows that these are the moments where she's always ready. Where she showed up, I mean, man, it's, it's undeniable. And uh, also, especially when you're competing at that level, you know what I mean? A lot of your competitors already have in the back of their mind, you know, that that's another thing, too, that they're looking for. Like, dang, when is she going to drop this big old 20 meters? Like, when is she going to drop it? So um, it also plays a part into other people's minds. Me, not personally, but uh, everybody else, possibly. <laughs> so when everyone talks about, like, oh, you know, we need our Netflix series for, for track, like that, it, it's led to this big boom in Formula One. Everyone's got their favorite teams and drivers and all that stuff. And it was like, we need it for track. And it's like, well, if it ever comes to track, I don't think it should ever start with, like, the distance runners or the or – mm -hmm. really, I think it starts with the field events. I'll and even – I'll endorse that. The yeah. shot putters, like, if a documentary series followed your last 12 months from yes. the Olympics <laughs> – Oh, they they'd have a ball, man. Like, <laughs> I mean, dude, there's so many ups and downs. Yes. That I think like the storytelling around that, like you guys get, you know, a couple throws on on the broadcast, and there just isn't enough time where there it is missing. And and I think you, what would the last 12 months have shown us? Uh man, the last 12 months definitely, like you said, ups and downs. I mean, you know, having to leave the Olympics early, plan my mother's funeral, send my little sister off to college, um, by get hip surgery by September work my way and try and rehab that and then also realizing that yo mentally i needed a break so i took two months off like by december just to try and mentally get back right changing coaches in january going back and changing back to my old coach by may a week and a half before i actually uh competed and still being like you know just a slither away a, a toe toe foul away from making that team i mean it shows you know the the human inside of, you know, us as athletes that people typically see us as, you know, these invincible beings or these beings that end up just being superheroes. But at the end of the day, the only thing that's super about us is our ability to constantly come back from adversity. Mm -hmm. I think it's I think it's beautiful. And then at the same time, then we get to peel back the curtain and see, like, what, you know, Jessica's doing for a year and what oh, Gong yeah. is doing for a year. And, and that's how you pick your favorites. And I think, like, you do, you definitely do have, like, a huge uh, sort of fan base already. Um, and I would only love to see it explode even more. Yeah. I'm going to ask this real quick because we touched on the on the women throws. But uh, what do people think of Ryan Krauser? Like, that guy is, <laughs> right? Like, you watch, Yo. you watch him and just go, well, that's just listen, stupid. I, I've trained with Ryan. Like. Right? I, I, listen, every time I train with Ryan, I always try to bully him. Like, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not even going to lie. Like, Does I he mean, try to make you fish? Huh? Nah. Okay. Thankfully not. Man, <laughs> I put him in a full Nelson, man. What? No. You hear that, Vince? <laughs> you hear that? <laughs> 
<laughs> but uh look like honestly ryan's like really a cool like chilled laid back guy like to yeah. himself he's like he is really nerdy which is like so funny because you think he's like one of these big like solid like mean nfl players ryan's really like chill and cool man i love him i love him uh he's funny as well like he's in like dad joke funny <laughs> what comes to that? Would you make the women's shot heavier? I think it should be. Nah. I think you could throw it f farther if it was even. I, I, honestly, especially for us to be able, like, if they wanted to make it even more interesting, if they put it down to a 3.5K, that would honestly be, like, the best route. Make it lighter. Lighter. Wow. I say that from a standpoint of, man, should we be rivaling with the guys? Like, we'd be throwing 74, 75 feet with a 3.5. Okay. How, uh, we I asked or we asked Ryan this at USA is how far can you throw me? <laughs> I'm like I'm 145, 511. Oh, what? That's easy. You're like my warm up weight. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, like I'll go pace it off. How if far you do it are now, we going? Uh, I, I could probably like realistically, I'll probably get you like a solid. Um, well, I did jack that guy up at the, <laughs> the concert that one time. <laughs> When I pushed him like that, he went back. So probably about like a solid 20, 30 feet. Oh, hell yeah. All right. I'm gonna do it after. Right, we'll, we'll test it out right after this. Why wait? Let's go live. We'll just, we'll just, it's soft over uh, there. Ideally in a pool. Oh, Man. Yeah. You know, back in the day, they actually used to do a, a, a little, little person toss. Um, yes. That was actually a shot put thing back in the day. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah, we have we've progressed in some areas anymore. Yeah, we don't do that. Lot. yeah they did that. Lot. <laughs> Speaking of Australia, yeah, the right. Australians used to do that. I love that, and I hope that we get to hear so much more of this, you know, humor analysis. And bring just, that like, tonight. Bring yeah. it tonight to the broadcast. Man, this is just the beginning. I'm trying to warm up right now. I love it. Well, Raven, you've got a bunch of fans over here as well who probably want to get photos with you and all that stuff. So uh, thanks so much for taking the time to join us. Any last shout outs me. you want to make into the um, camera? Yeah, like shout out to my whole family back at home. Shout out to all of the baddies. Shout out to my girls with the nails. Shout out to everybody who's a track and field fan. Next time, turn the 10K off. And put it on the shot put <laughs> just for you just for you there you go <laughs> this is she's not coming back anymore this week right this was the final appearance <laughs> well, this is my last time this is my last time thank you guys thank, thank you thank you oh wait don't no. go without signing the you gotta oh, yeah, sign, you gotta the waiver. sign off here yeah. sign the waiver <laughs> you gotta sign it <laughs> yeah <laughs> and you get to sign us off boss yeah. All right. Well, everyone, thanks for tuning in to another day of Sidious Mag Live here at the World Athletics Championships. Uh, you've got some action coming up. Is it on NBC, Peacock, CNBC? It's a lot of places. Hayward Field. But Check there'll be a lot of good stuff listing. to talk about tomorrow. With, with that. Well, we'll know the fastest man in the world by tomorrow. That's really exciting. Uh, to hi, Who you got? Fred or, or Trayvon or Marcel or... Christian, Marvin. Marvin. I, it's hard to go. It's hard to go against Fred. He's just thrown it down, and um, I'm with. I I, I kind of agree with Mo Green. I think poor Christian's trying to make everything right in one race, yeah. and I don't think that's how it works. Right? Tension is the enemy. Tension and friction is the enemy of anything good in athletics. And I think he just, you know, you can't run that far with your jaw clenched. And I think he just so wants to get it back that it's it's working against him a little bit. Raven, who you got in the men's hundred? Are you Fred? Fr Team Fred? Yo, I don't even know. I don't, I don't, I don't know who it's going to be, but this whole race is going to be crazy. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right, you, and we, you went with Fre uh, Fred? You know, I, I, I think Fred's the heavy favorite. I think the question right now, just based off the fact that, we, I mean, we did the Tracksmith prediction contest. Mm -hmm. Fred's name is everywhere. Yeah. So the question is almost right. like Fred or the field. Right, and for me, I, I want Fred to just run a controlled semi. If he runs a controlled semi, I think he gets it. If, I think if he goes too hard in the semi, it might be a little difficult to come back. But it's amazing. 90, whatever, you know, under two hours later. You look at those heats, and it's top two, right? And then I think too fast. Like, there are going to be some dudes that are not going to make the final, mm -hmm. which is going to be crazy. Yeah, possibly Marcel Jacobs. Hot take? I don't possibly know. you. Yeah. <laughs> All right, everyone. Well... Uh, thanks for tuning in. Be sure to subscribe to the City Smack YouTube channel. We'll be back live later tonight uh, when we tape another episode of Champs Chats, which is our daily podcast on the City Smack podcast feed. Uh, many thanks to Tracksmith for all their continued support of all of our coverage uh, throughout the World Championships. You can use promo code WORLDS for 20% off all of your orders. Uh, and I think that's all we got. I love track and field. Uh, we love all of track and field, 10K included. Uh, we, we love the 10K, <laughs> and we really love field. Don't forget, 43% of the events, half the name. <laughs>
See you guys later. <laughs>